Welcome back to Flat Irons Tuning. For this episode of the Shop Chronicles, we're going to take a deeper dive into the Subaru cooling systems with basically the information that we now have about how important the, the radio, radiator caps and the type of radiator caps uh, that you're using on your car are. Uh, before we dive into that, just want to say, you know, if you like what we're doing with the channel, if you like the content that we're putting out, please do like and subscribe to the channel. We greatly appreciate that. That uh, helps the channel grow. And uh, you know, if, if this if this content, if the stuff that we're talking about is helpful to you, uh, or if you find it interesting, please uh, help pass it on and get the word out. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that too. All right, so. About the radiator cap specifically. So what we're talking about here is the difference between the one-way and the two-way caps, uh, and basically the two caps uh, that Subaru puts on these cars from the factory. And we made a video about that specifically, uh, and I'll put a link to that, uh, you know, probably up here. So if you're not familiar with what that difference is, take a look at that. But what I wanted to do now is basically kind of tell you how we've used that information. Um, so what what do we know now that we didn't before? So, so the first thing is that, based on all of our, our experience on the Pikes Peak car, we've always been using two caps of the same pressure, and now we realize that they're both two-way caps. And it seems like that is you know, prone to issues. We talked to Tasso, he has also been using two two-way caps that were the same pressure, and he has had some similar issues uh, with pushing coolant, though mostly just in hot conditions. Um, though with, with uh, his car, a hill climb car, the conditions that he's running in, it, they're usually short runs. So just you know, two to four minutes at a time. So it's a little bit different than you know, spending 20, 30 minutes on track at a, at a given time. Um, so it seems like his experience is relevant to ours. Then we have Scotty. So Scotty has not had any issues. Uh, he has always been running two two a caps, but they have always been staggered like the factory caps a 1.3 bar cap on the radiator and a 1.1 bar cap on his on his expansion tank um, So that seems to point to the fact that that stagger in, in pressure release is really important And then we have my yellow WRX, which I've never had any coolant problems with Cooling problems with and we're going to get back to why that's relevant here in a minute um, the other thing that we know in kind of doing a deep dive once we, once we knew what to look for with these radiator caps is that this is a Subaru radiator and Subarus use a, a downflow radiator, which means that basically the, the coolant from the engine goes into the top tank, then it has to basically go down through the cooling fins of the radiator and, and then out. Now, Dan from Professional Awesome wrote an article a while back talking about cooling and improving cooling for race cars and known issues for race cars. Now it turns out that a downflow radiator is pretty common out there, especially in you know, Subarus of course, Mitsubishis and Hondas for instance. Most of the time in pretty much all these other applications, there's only one radiator cap on the car and it's on the radiator. And it turns out that that is a known issue. And the issue is that because this upper tank of the radiator, of a downflow radiator, is a high pressure area and the cap is on the high pressure area, they're prone, the, the caps are prone to opening early. So, um, you know, with prof the guys from Professional Awesome, they, they are very familiar with the Evo platform, and apparently this is one of the things that is known on the e in the Evo world. And the solution in that case is to remove the radiator cap from the upper tank and add an expansion tank. So in reading through that and kind of thinking it all through, it became really interesting that Subaru gives you an expansion tank. So that's, that's actually something that's reasonably unusual with a lot of these other cars out there where the factory, Subaru, is giving you the expansion tank, which is kind of a big piece of the puzzle that's, that's the solution to, to get the car's cooling system to work better. So that basically led us to, to think about a few things. So, so where we're at is that we've tried a similar solution on the Pikes Peak car and on Scotty's car. In Tasso's situation, he's still running a factory radiator for cost and availability reasons, which means that he can't remove this upper, upper cap. But what we've done is we've given him the factory one-way cap to put on. We're going to see if that helps improve his cooling situation. But what we've done on both Scotty's car and the Pikes Peak car is to remove this upper radiator cap. From, from the radiator entirely and go to a single cap. And uh, you know, even the guy that was, that was doing this uh, work for us was a little bit apprehensive about removing the cap, but then that's where my WRX comes in. That's actually the configuration 
that Subaru, basically from the factory, these cars came with up until about 2004. So it's actually a tried and tested configuration. It's just Subaru made a change, which seems to be more um, in the interest of preserving or extending the life of, of a radiator that has a plastic top tank versus something like this or a, you know, a Koyo Mishimoto uh, uh, CNR, whatever, radiator that has all welded tanks. Now, the one thing is that because this is a high pressure zone and you're moving, if you're moving the cap, that might cause an increase in pressure in, in the cooling system, which is not necessarily a great thing, but in certain circumstances, like what we were trying to do with the Pikes Peak car, you do want to be able to at least increase the boiling point by increasing the pressure in the cooling system. And in kind of talking through and making the decision to make the jump to this solution, one of the, one of the conclusions that we came to is if you want to be able to run a higher pressure cap or to, to raise the, the pressure in the system, having the two caps really complicates that. And so it simplifies things significantly to be able to remove one of those caps. Um, and for us, you know, running at Pikes Peak, starting at very high elevation, um, you know, that's where we really feel like it's, it's going to be helpful to do that. And so that's where just simplifying things, removing this cap from the radiator and, uh, and just going to the single cap on the, on the expansion tank simplifies that process significantly. It takes one of these big variables out of the equation. And so we're hopeful that that should um, really make things simple. Now, the one other thing that I will mention um, before you just go off and, and remove this cap we didn't just weld the upper tank shut because in looking at, at the design of the radiators um, on Scotty's car and the Pikes Peak car here, they're like this Koyo where they're designed with the cap in mind. So there's this big, this big section at the top where the cap sits where if you would just seal this completely off, it would be hard to get air out of this section. So you're, you'd kind of be making your, your life a little bit more difficult um, to, to broke the cooling system. Uh, so what we did is we actually welded on an AN fitting here. So there's, we, for filling the coolant up, we can still open uh, the top of the top deck of the radiator, let the air out, but then put the AN cap on. That should hold nice and tight, not let any air in, etc. Uh, during normal driving or during or on the track, um, and then prevent, you know, any of the issues hopefully that we were having before. Um, I guess it's also worth mentioning that we're right about to the point where we're going to take the engine out of the Pikes Peak car and, and go through and check the head gasket. So we're still going to investigate that and we'll let you know what we find, whatever that might be with you know, pictures, what have you. But um, we, we have basically run both of the cars. We, we've burped the coolant in the Pikes Peak car and it is functioning significantly more like you would expect now that we've removed the, uh, the cap from the radiator. So that's that's where we're at. Um, Scotty was able to take his car out to the track, but he had other issues. So he wasn't really able to get a full run in, but the cooling system seemed to work well. Um, so it's a, a good initial attempt, but still more research needed. But I wanted to let you guys know that that's kind of our, our thinking through all this and, and um, what we're going to try. I think we're also going to do a little bit. We're going to try some things with the thermostats as well, as far as either drilling extra holes in the thermostats or possibly removing the center of the thermostat altogether. Um, but don't have enough to give, to give you information about whether, what we're going to do exactly and how that's going to work. All I can tell you is that when we were at, at Circuit of the Americas, we did drill two holes in the thermostat in a Pikes Peak car. Um, that's as it sits currently. And that seemed to have, seemed to improve things a bit. Uh, but we just need to play around with it a bit more. So um, that's where we're at. Pulling, pulling the head gaskets out of this car, seeing what that, that uh, looks like, seeing what that tells us, then putting everything back together and hopefully getting Scotty's car and the Pikes Peak car back on track so we can get them good and hot and shaken down and tested. And we'll see where we're at. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully uh, this maybe gives you some, some ideas or some better information about um, options you might have with your cooling system. And until next time, as always, stay tuned to the Flutter Institute. Thank you.